Hey guys, Greg D here back with another video and today I'm going to give you guys a little bit something different than what you usually see on my channel. Um, today I want to give you a review and a walk around of my brand new car. Well, actually I've had it for about a month and I've been trying to review it for that month but just never really got around to it. So let's get started. So what I have here is a 2014 Nissan Maxima S, which is the base model. Um, I got it with about 22,000 miles on it, seeing as it was owned by a rental car company before I got my hands on it. So the mileage is a little high, but you know what? Cars are meant to be driven, so really I'm not all too upset about it. Now the first thing here with the front is I really, really like the way that the front looks I think it's aggressive even though this is supposed to be a family sedan quote unquote and Nissan will tell you or they advertise this as their four-door sports car which I kind of agree with to some extent I mean the front does remind me of a 370z especially in the headlights obviously because they have that same claw design now if you come up here now the S does not actually come with the fog lights, but they do have obviously the um, attachment there for them. So I may add them on at some point. I haven't really decided yet. And obviously here with the headlight itself, you have projector beams, headlights. Uh, these are halogen because they are the base model. Um, I probably will add on HIDs at some point because I had HIDs in my previous car, which was a 2011 Volkswagen GTI, and I love I love the HIDs, so I probably will add those on at some point. I'm coming across the wheels here, 18-inch wheels, which I actually really, really do like. I'm a big fan of the 18-inch wheels. And as you come across here. You'll notice the chrome door handles, and you'll also notice the sunroof there, which is standard. And you also notice there the little button on the door handle, which is for the keyless entry. All you have to do is hit the button one time to unlock the car. Well, actually, that just locked it. And then you do it again. Wait a second. And now it's unlocked. which is kind of a nice feature. The only problem with that feature though is it does not unlock both doors, or all, I should say all the doors at one time. It only unlocks, or what I should say, it only unlocks the driver's side door. It locks all the doors, but it does only unlocks the driver's side, which is kind of annoying, especially if you have, obviously, multiple people trying to get into this car, which honestly, you probably will have if you bought this car. So, once again, once again, I actually really do like the taillight design as well. I think, you know, even though this is, like I said, a family sedan, quote unquote, it does give it a more aggressive look. I actually feel like this is a very slick, sleek looking car. It's very nice. Dual exhaust which at some point I would actually like to add an exhaust onto this car to make it sound like a 350Z, just because the engine is the same engine in the 350Z, just detuned. Now forgive me for the dirtiness of the car. It just rained and apparently I got some bird shit on the car as well, so that's always fun. But, you know, it's being a white car, it is kind of hard to keep clean at all times. So, you know, stuff happens. There's the wheels again. Alright. Alright, so now for the inside. So here we have the inside of the car. We've got nice chrome handles, aluminum there for the door handle. You have space down here for a bottle of some sort in the mat pocket. Um, 
As you can see here, the front and the driver and passenger door are automatic, both up and down. However, the rear windows are not. You have your Maxima sill plates, which are standard. All right, now let's get into this bad boy here. Here we go, here's the gauges. Going on here. I actually like this little trim or whatever this is. This is like a like a piano veneer of some sort. It's really nice. Kind of adds like a high touch quality to the car. Um, with this car as well, you do get the base uh, radio. You don't you don't get the bows, um, which kind of sucks. Um, I wish I had the bows just because I'm a big fan of Bose audio. But for the, the stock radio, it's not the worst I've ever had. But it's not, you know, the best that I've had either. Well, up here, you have your auto dimming rear view mirror here, which actually I've never had before, and that's kind of nice. Um, I don't know if you can really see it all that well, but sunroof controls are there. Um, also, another thing that's kind of nice is th this car has dual zone climate control which is a first for me in any of the car cars that I've had. So that's kind of a nice feature when my wife and I are in the car together and she wants it to be like hot because she's cold all the time and I'm and I need it to be cold cuz I'm hot all the time. So also this car does come with a 6 CD in-dash changer which is pretty cool. I had that in my GTI before and I really like that. So Now also this car does come with a CVT transmission. Unfortunately, this is the only transmission that is available in the Maxima. The CVT takes a little getting used to, especially if you have never had a CVT transmission. It doesn't act like a normal automatic transmission does just because it's not made the same way. So it, it does take a little getting used to, but I will admit it is very smooth. It is very smooth. The response down low is pretty nice too. That I guess that's just because as well. The Maxima does have a good amount of torque. The gauges are real nice too. They're real simple, real clean cut. Let me see. Let me go ahead and shut the door here. Real solid construction. Radio controls, Bluetooth controls on your steering wheel. Match your cruise. Down here on the side, I don't know if you can see it really well, but you have your power mirror control, your traction control buttons. Let me see if I can actually Turn the car on here so you can see the gauges. Here, hold on one second. There are the gauges. Don't mind the tire pressure thing. I've been fiddling with that for all day. See, I mean, the gauges are real nice, real clean, real simple. And obviously, I need some tire pressure. All right, so now let's check the engine bay. All right, so here is the engine bay. As I said before, we have basically the same engine as a 350Z, the VQ35DE. Now, in this form, in the Maxima, the car pushes out 290 horses, 261 foot-pound of torque. It's actually a great engine. I really like it a lot. I like the fact. That was one of the big selling points for me for this car. Was the fact that it had the same engine as a 350Z. You know. You know, and that, that is a big selling point for this car. 
at least for me, and I'm sure for other of you guys out there as well, is, you know, it's got the practicality of being able to haul your family around, but underneath everything, it's a 350Z, it's a performance car. Now, obviously, you know, even in the handling aspect, you know, it, it's somewhat softer than a 350Z would be, but I mean, the, the heritage, the underpinnings, it's all there. So, I mean, you can still have a lot of fun with this car, honestly. Let's go back and see if I can get a decent clip of the exhaust here, which may not sound very well, but we'll give it a shot. Man, this car does sound so good. It is such an amazing sounding car. It's got such a nice throatiness to it. I can't wait to actually, you know, tinker with this thing and get some, you know, aftermarket things done to it here. shut this up and I will come right back all right so here we go for the back seat same aluminum trim on the door handle same leather padding on the armrest here which is pretty nice gives it a nice touch nice quality red stitching color contrasting along their sill plates but I wanted to basically show back seat slide in here and I wanted to show you that even sitting behind myself, now I am about six foot tall and I do have very long legs, but even sitting behind myself here, I've got a decent amount of leg room. I mean, I still have a good, you know, two to three inches of, of knee room here. And even my feet, you know, I'm not like underneath totally. So there's a good amount of room. You've got your vents here, leather padding there on the center console. Now, the only problem, maybe, for some of you is the fact that I don't really have too much in the way of headroom unless I actually, like, get down in the seat a little bit. So that might be an issue for some folks who are, you know, let's say my height or a little taller. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much, like, about a good inch away. Although, if you do notice there, there is a cutout in the top there just for that reason, but... I would say, you know, anybody probably over six foot tall may have a little bit of an issue. But I mean, overall, this is a very, very nice car. The interior is very nice. I mean, these seats are probably some of the most comfortable, if not the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in, in a car. So, I mean, this car probably would be perfect honestly for a road trip and a long one at that right there you can see the front here I mean honestly this interior is very nice and I mean I had to I had the GTI before that and I always loved how the GTI had a great interior even though it wasn't necessarily like a very expensive car. But Nissan here with the Maxima, I feel like did just as good. Like I said, I really like that piano veneer type accenting along there. And a lot of the materials are soft touch. Now they are hard touch, a little bit above the, the gauges and a little bit above the radio, but for where you're you know resting your arms, let's say here, or on the door. Very soft touch, very comfortable. You know, this is this is a I think this car is a great balance between, you know, performance like I said, being as it is a basically a 350Z, but it's got great comfort, great practicality, good amount of luxury, quote unquote, 
I mean, basically, if you want to think about it, in the way that I think about it is, is it's just a, basically a, a luxury version, a fancier version of a 350Z. Now, you know, most of you probably would say, yeah, that's an Infiniti G35 as well, but, you know, not everyone can afford an Infiniti G35, Infiniti G37, now even the, the 50. All right, so let's go back and check out that trunk space here for a second. Now, here is the trunk. Now, it is actually, like the opening itself is actually pretty nice and big and actually is pretty deep I mean like I said before I'm used to coming from a GTI and a hatchback but I mean comparably this is a pretty decent sized trunk and as you can see there you do have a 60 40 split so I mean this is a pretty decently sized trunk here this oh that didn't close all the way huh. let's give it a good oh well I'll have to close that in a minute <laughs> but yeah overall I think this is a super car I think it's got a good mix of practicality, comfort, luxury, performance. And it still gets decent gas mileage too. I mean, you're hitting 1926, 19 city, 26 highway. And this thing has also got a huge, huge gas tank, 20 gallons. So you may pay a little more at the pump, however, because the gas tank is so big, you're able to get a few extra miles out of it compared to, let's say, maybe other cars in its class. But overall, I think this is a really sharp car. Can't wait to actually start modifying it a little bit. All right, guys. Well, I think that's about it. I think that covers most of everything that I wanted to talk about. So, you know, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on my videos. And I will see you guys soon.